Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to ask, how are you doing lately? Like seriously, how are you doing? I don't know about you, but September so far has felt like a lot. I feel like I've been saying yes too much and just overall girl bossing a bit too close to the sun. And with that, I feel myself starting to get overwhelmed, anxious, and quite frankly, a little burnt out. And when I notice that starting to creep in, I know it's time to get back to self-care. And yeah, I know, I cringe too when I said that. Because whenever I hear the word self-care, it immediately makes me think of green juice, essential oils, and candlelit baths. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes that version of self-care can feel a little temporary. The self-care I'm talking about today is a little bit more than that. So in today's video, I'm going to take you along a little reset day and how I pull myself back when things are starting to feel like they're a bit too much. But before we get into it, I'd really like to thank Better Not Younger for partnering with me in today's video. Better Not Younger is the first brand designed to address the signs of aging hair for women who believe beauty is not defined by age. Their products are designed to provide solutions to thinning, lack of volume, dryness, frizz, and brassiness with the aim to bring strength and fullness back to your hair. They sent me their second chance repairing shampoo, which is one of their best sellers for dry, damaged, and color treated hair. My main issue with my hair is dryness and frizz, and I've been washing my hair a lot more since I've been going to the gym and sweating a whole bunch, and so far I'm finding it to be really gentle on my hair. I've also really been enjoying their No Remorse Heat Protection Spray. It contains avocado oil, vitamin E, and argon oil to help hydrate, and it protects from heat damage up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Since I cut my hair short, I find I actually have to use more heat on my hair to style it the way I like, so it's been amazing to help protect against all the heat tools I've been using on it. So if you're a frizzy gal like me, definitely give this one a try. And I have to admit, I'm pretty skeptical in general about hair growth serums, but the before and after photos and the great reviews of the Superpower Fortifying Hair and Scalp Serum really had me interested. To be honest, I haven't used this long enough to appreciate the full result, so I will definitely be reporting back after using it for the recommended 12 weeks. One dropper full is good enough for the whole scalp, and it's not greasy or heavy at all. Better Not Younger products are cruelty-free with Leaping Bunny certification, they're vegan, color safe, and they're now available at ultabeauty.com and in all physical Ulta stores for my American followers. I just really love how they're not trying to hide the fact that women age. Aging is cool, aging is a privilege, so it's really refreshing to see a brand like this. So if you're interested in checking out Better Not Younger, I will be sure to leave the link below. Now let's get into the video. If you're feeling particularly burnt out, stretched, really thin the first thing to do is to slow down and give yourself compassion and tell yourself like hey i'm feeling overwhelmed i'm going through a hard time right now things are difficult right now if you struggle with doing this imagine how you would talk to your best friend if they were confiding something similar to you you likely wouldn't speak harshly to them and say things like get it together or you should be able to handle this it's not that bad you'd acknowledge that they were going through a rough time and even offer things that might help them so when we're going through a hard time, why don't we say the same things to ourselves? Self-compassion is a pillar of self-care because it's the thing that acknowledges our humanity. We aren't productivity machines that can do it all as much as we like to believe that we are. So by simply telling myself, hey, this is a lot right now. This is difficult to juggle. I allow myself to feel what I'm feeling instead of letting my inner critic take over to try to push me even harder. So giving yourself some compassion can help you take your foot off the gas. It's the first step in acknowledging that it's okay to need to slow down and just step back a little. After the self-compassion part, the next thing I ask myself is what do I need right now? If I've been feeling in like a low energy rut, maybe leaning too much into eating takeout and just feeling really sluggish, then if I'm taking time to reset, then maybe that's when I can lean into things like routine and discipline. That way I don't have to think about it or wait for motivation to want to do it. But if I'm feeling more stretched thin, which I'm feeling like today, then doing things like slowing down and just chilling out feel a little bit more in order. I can also ask myself things like, am I feeling overwhelmed by my stuff? Do I need to declutter? Or am I feeling lonely and like missing my friends and family? Do I need to reach out and make some plans with them? So if you're feeling some type of way, I think take some time to identify what exactly it is you think you need and then see if you can find the time or take the time to give yourself that. 
This morning I wanted to go to the gym. I, my hair was dirty, I was kind of feeling gross, and I wanted to go to the gym first so then I would only need to shower once, but I was just like, nope, I need to sleep in. I am chilling out, the gym is just not happening this morning. So I leaned in to have a bit more of a slower, more pampering kind of morning, didn't do any tidying, made a nice breakfast, had a cup of coffee, did my hair. So today I'm really all about leading into a bit of a routine, like I'm still gonna go to the gym today because I want to, um, but I'm just taking things a lot more slowly. I do wanna make some time to get out of the house and I don't wanna wait until it's time to go to the gym to do that, so I am going to take an inventory of some things that we need from the grocery store and get that. And I find going to the grocery store like really kind of fun and therapeutic. I used to hate it post COVID, but now I'm starting to like it again, um, so. Let's go to Farm Boy, which is like the closest thing we have to Trader Joe's. If you are in America, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good time. I got a bit too ambitious with my farmer carry abilities, but we made it. So that's your farm boy haul for the week. Been really liking these. They're just super easy. So I got Northern Crunch. That's not what the lettuce is called. It's just green lettuce. Ontario Sweet Greens. Love the grown in Ontario. I'm gonna be making some like egg muffin thingy. So I got some old cheese. Look how expensive. Can you see that? 10 bucks. Groceries in Canada are expensive, but like damn girl. Limes for this salmon recipe that I'm making tonight pasture-raised eggs, red onion, white onion for soup. Normally I'd get yellow, they didn't have any. Bananas, lemon, feta cheese, yogurt. I'm kind of like sick of plain Greek yogurt right now, so I just wanted whatever, more sugar, but the protein is there. This granola looked very intriguing. Might do this as a snack. We ran out of mayonnaise and Farm Boy, I guess like Trader Joe's is very well known for sauces, so I decided to try this roasted garlic and herb mayonnaise. That might like, go well with like tuna salad and stuff. Chicken thighs for the soup I'm making. Sausages, bay leaves for soup, onion powder because we were out. I got colored carrots because that's more fun in soup. Macintosh apples because they're my favorite, it's apple season. I got these wraps to make egg wraps with for breakfast, so I'm gonna try that because I feel like my breakfasts are still a little bit too low carb. And then celery for the soup. So that's the haul, chef's kiss. All right, so I went out and got fresh air. I got some groceries. I've got the soup started, which brings me into my third step when I feel this way is to fully embrace doing the thing that you say you need. Don't let toxic productivity or the guilt of doing nothing interfere with this time that you want to take for yourself. Because in my experience, at least when you feel this way, your body's trying to tell you something. And I'm learning over time that it's probably best to try to listen to it. You know, on days that I feel more on, I might try to wake up as early as I can, go to the gym, shower, eat, and try to cram in one or two YouTube videos before the day is done. And on those days, I feel amazing. I feel really productive, but on days like today, the thought of doing any of that feels absolutely draining. And I know if I tried to do that, I would come out with less energy than I did before, my work would suffer, and I would just feel even worse at the end of the day. And what I'm learning by sort of embracing that and just dismissing the idea of, oh, I should be a little more productive or I should be doing this or that is I'm setting a boundary. I've told myself what I need. I've acknowledged and given myself compassion for how I'm feeling. And I'm allowing myself to lean into that instead of allowing myself to feel guilty for the things that I could have done today instead. Which takes me into tip number four, and it's that try not to make your reset day just another to-do list. On a more productive, like getting my life together style of reset day, I might actually do exactly that. I'll focus on things like cleaning the apartment, doing laundry, meal prep, all of which help me feel amazing, orderly, and calm. And they're really all part of just my everyday maintenance routine. But on days like today, doing any of that feels like 
a lot. Instead, I'm focusing on just doing things that feel more intuitive. I got the burst of energy to go get groceries, to go make soup, to read my book. I told myself I needed a slower kind of day. So instead of doing things like rushing through my routines or telling myself I need to do X, Y, and Z in order to make this day feel like it was worth something, I'm just gonna slow down and enjoy doing whatever I kind of feel like doing. And tip number five is to disconnect. Not from others if you need it, but when I'm feeling burnt out, I mean disconnect from social media because I often find myself turning towards social media to get my like fix of mindless entertainment. But I do notice that if I do that too much, it tends to really overstimulate me and even pushes me to indulge in bad habits like impulse buying and comparing myself to others. Unless I'm watching kitten videos because there's nothing toxic about that, they're adorable. So when I'm feeling burnt out, I actually try to put my phone away. I will watch a YouTube video or two of channels that inspire me and get me excited. But in general, I do try to stay away from things like scrolling on TikTok, Instagram, even Pinterest, because I know it just really makes me feel bad at the end of the day, especially if I do it too much. So instead, I really try to focus on kind of entertaining myself on things that are not on my phone like reading a physical book or watching an old movie that feels nostalgic. Because I truly feel like when you disconnect yourself from the world, especially in the form of social media, it can really allow you to reconnect with yourself in other ways. So that's my really simple five-step reset routine for when I'm feeling burnt out. I think it's a really good mix of leaning into discipline and routine so that I don't have to wait for things like motivation to strike to maintain the good habits that make me feel my best but I'm still allowing myself to listen to my body and giving myself what I need in a more gentle and self-compassionate way. I will say though, it's definitely not an overnight fix. Just because I took today, it doesn't mean that all of my issues and all of my overcommitments are gonna be solved. This is where I really need to focus on things like implementing boundaries, learning to say no, and really learning to recognize exactly what it is I need, because sometimes that's more difficult to do than you might think. But I do think that days like today and these five simple steps are all things that we can do to tilt the scale back into a more balanced direction. So with all that said, let me know some of the things that you like to do when you start to notice that things are feeling like a little too much. Leave me a comment down below. Thank you again to Better Not Younger. If you were interested in checking them out, I will leave everything linked down below for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.